So what is your favorite underappreciated anime series? Let me know about that in the comments section below because today I have my personal top 20 underappreciated anime series. Now a few of these actually have really strong cult followings but I feel like they never hit the mainstream whereas so many people would actually enjoy these and that's why I'm here today to help you guys out and find some really awesome anime that you're gonna love but you've never heard of before. But before I get into today's list I wanted to let you guys know about this really awesome 14 anime t-shirt sale where you can find tens of thousands of different anime t-shirt designs even you could probably find all of the anime on today's list even though they're underappreciated you could probably still find them on the site because it's just that awesome they have more than shirts but you can check the link out in the description section below get them while they last because the sale will only last for a few days so starting the list off I just wanted to let you guys know about two quick things first of all this list is in no particular order instead of putting these in order I basically group them in terms of their genre so if you like one chances are you'll like the next few in the list as well secondly I have reviews for many of these anime so you can find links to them in the description section below so getting the list kicked off with number 20 we have planet test which is in our slice of life section of the video so slice of life is not something that we would normally associate with outer space uh, anime series but considering the fact that this is set in outer space it's easily the most down-to-earth anime that you could find or one of them anyways because these characters are just so detailed and you really go and see all of the different uh, aspects of their life through romance and the drama that they have and through the character development and everything and I think this is a show that really does grip you and get you uh, emotionally connected to some of these characters and it has a very powerful ending. It is a complete experience and it is a must watch. So the next two slice of life anime that I have are perfect if you'd prefer your anime to be not so out of this world. Starting off we have Kids on the Slope, which is a musical anime, is a music slice of life that has strong impacting character uh, interaction here. It's definitely something that will create this strong emotional bond between you and the characters, and on top of that, you get to see all of the dramatic backstories here, and you get to see how the characters develop over time, and you know, things will flourish between the characters. There's going to be some, some fights, there's going to be a little love in there too, plus on top of that, it's got a very powerful ending to it as well, because this is a complete experience. Now the next anime that I wanted to bring to your attention is Genshiken, which I think is probably going to be something that everybody who watches this video will enjoy, even if you're not that big of a fan of Slice of Life, which by the way, I feel like every anime that I've listed so far would be great for anybody, but Genshiken especially due to the fact that I think many people would find this relatable considering the fact that all of the characters or and the story as a whole are basically set within an anime club at a college where characters characters sit around, they talk about anime, they build Gundam model kits, they play video games, they go to conventions, they do all sorts of anime related things, and I think that this is an anime that I really envy the people who they have so many other friends around that they watch anime, and I think this is a situation that a lot of people can appreciate when they watch the show. But the only thing is that I have to warn you about is the ending is actually non-canon. It's a decent ending, but I personally prefer the ending of the manga. So if you are more of a manga reader, then go ahead and check out that manga instead. Moving on to the next category, we have a hybrid between fantasy and adventure. Starting off with Kaiba, which admittedly has a very passionate cult following due to the fact that it is directed by uh, Masaki Yuasa. Just think Tatami Galaxy and also Ping Pong if you haven't heard of him before. Now, now this is something which I feel like the animation and art style is something that definitely throws a lot of people off to watching it because it definitely looks like something that would be uh, for kids to some extent but it's actually an anime which will turn everything that you think about anime up on its head as you start off with a character with amnesia which you probably just cringe when you heard that but it actually works here. This is one of the few instances where I've seen amnesia actually work in a story before. It works very well and on top of that they're living in this fantasy world where characters can trade bodies and there's this big uh, deal with corruption about how the rich are basically subjugating all of the poor where basically the rich are becoming immortal and controlling everyone due to the fact that they can always afford new bodies and just swap memories around each and every time they just want to upgrade their body. So needless to say Kaiba is an anime which is incredibly bizarre but what I found shocking about this is how well they articulated the human condition as within the first half of the series we're going through and seeing uh, just a single episode based on around the life of some of the side characters in the story and I think it was totally just this beautiful experience that you need to watch. 
Next we have Kino's Journey, which like Kaiba also has a very passionate cult following. And by the way, if you loved Kaiba, then you'll love Kino's Journey. If you love Kino's Journey, you'll love Kaiba. I think these shows really do go hand in hand. But this is a show which doesn't focus so much on any sort of character development or characterization as it does uh, uses our protagonist as basically the perspective that we view her world from as she travels through a different continent in every single episode. So this is episodic. It's also something that is filled with philosophical undertones as she goes through and basically helps out different people and learns uh, basically how different people live in different parts of the world where there's always uh, a different moral and a different uh, theme in each and every episode. This is definitely an anime to rewatch over and over again. It never loses its value. Definitely check out Kino's Journey. Next we have Last Exile, which beautifully incorporates this feeling of adventure that you get with these great anime series that are totally out of this world, where we have our protagonists who are teenagers that are living in this destitute village by themselves, and basically how they survive is that they uh, fly this little ship around completing small missions for people just in order to make ends meet, and then we see that they get caught up within this war and they learn about mysteries that basically uncover how the mysterious fantasy world of their works. It's totally something for any fantasy adventure junkie. It is a must watch. Now lastly for our fantasy adventure little grouping we have here and you can also mix in action with this one because it is Moribito. If you want your fill of action, fantasy and adventure this is definitely the place to go because it follows this strong willed warrior woman and her journeys across the country where she becomes obligated to basically take care of this uh, prince where his guards are basically trying to assassinate him and she's got to protect him from his own kingdom. It's a very interesting story for reasons that I can't say because I don't want to spoil you, but it is definitely something that will grow this strong connection between you and the two characters that we see here and it is definitely a beautiful story that everyone must see. Moving on to our next category, we have science fiction, starting off with Speed Grapher. Now this is a show which is really bizarre and it must be experienced. Basically we have a private eye who goes around and he takes pictures of things, but he gets caught up in this uh, underground secret society where they basically take uh, this girl who has special saliva and they use her in order to unlock the deepest desires of people. A good example of this is that our protagonist uses his camera to create explosions, but there's all sorts of other freaky and creepy abilities that people get, such as the s and man, who because he's into that sort of thing, his body is actually one of those rubber suits. You know, it's, it's actually a very exciting and very action-packed anime that is also pretty dark and does a few things that really push the envelope. On top of that, that it also features one of my more favorite villains in anime and has this great ending to it that next we have Space Runaway Ideon and I can feel it now I know there's probably a few hardcore mecha fans out there right now just shaking your head because this is actually a very popular anime series but in the West nobody knows about it nobody watches it and people certainly aren't talking about it but Space Runaway Ideon if you're not familiar with this actually inspired Neon Genesis Evangelion and was created by the creator of Mobile Suit Gundam this came out directly after the original series did, and it's one of those shows that really love to play with your head and make you ask questions about it, but there is a bit of a caveat to me adding it to this list. If you are accustomed to 70s anime, I know this came out in the 80s, but it looks like something from the 70s, if you're used to watching 70s anime, then watch the full series, but if it's harder for you to watch older shows and you still want to watch it, there are two recap movies which I feel uh, could probably give you the same experience. Of course, I'm probably going to get a... Uh, some shoes thrown at me for that, but that's just the way that I feel. It actually, the story, it did take me a while to finish. Next, we have Toward the Terra, which is easily one of my favorite action, science fiction, drama. It's, it's very well-rounded, and it's also something which is a, a revamp of an older OVA series and an older manga, and, you know, people like to say, oh, I hope this anime gets the Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood treatment, but I like to say, I hope it gets the Toward the Terra treatment, because I've never seen an anime with a revamp as successful as Toward the Terra. It really does do an amazing job, but basically the show is set in the distant future where Earth has become uninhabitable and you have humans living on another planet and they basically evolved into two different species. You have your regular humans and then you also have a subset of humans which have special psychic abilities. And when I say special, I mean they can live for a very long period of time, they can fly around in outer space without a helmet, and they can use psychic attacks which can destroy entire spaceships. Like if you like the action of Mecha, but maybe you're not too big 
big of a fan of robots and of machines doing everything, then this is a must watch. It's basically just people that are flying around in space, blowing everything up. It is totally action packed, but it also does an amazing job in terms of drama and also balancing out the strengths and weaknesses between these two different factions who are at war with each other. And lastly, for our science fiction grouping, we have Gundam War in the Pocket. If you're looking to get into Gundam and you only want to spend three hours to do it, then this is definitely the place to go. I would also recommend Iron Blooded Orphans too if you're trying to get into Gundam, but that is 50 episodes long. But Gundam War in the Pocket is something that I feel is definitely something which will attract people who have never tried mecha anime or people who have not actually liked mecha anime in the past because it's not so much about the machines as it is uh, the experience of this young boy who lives in a neutral space colony in the middle of war and basically he comes ac uh, acquainted with some of the soldiers that are in this war and he learns of the horrors of war firsthand as we become acquainted with him and some of the other characters in the series and there's a strong emotional connection between the characters and I think this is something which is a very dramatic experience that I think will touch anyone regardless of how you feel about mecha series. Moving on to the next category, we have action, starting off with Basilisk. And if you're looking for a 20-man team deathmatch filled with ninjas with superpowers, then this is definitely the place to go. Now, this is uh, it's basically like the ninja Romeo and Juliet with two different groups trying to kill each other with two people at the lead who are desperately in love with each other. But the story leaves a little bit to be desired, in my opinion, especially in terms of the characters. But it's just something that is a lot of fun for the, the action that we get because I feel like the characters are very well balanced and they did a lot of planning when it came to giving the characters their abilities because a lot of them actually do cancel out each other. So the next anime on the list is Giver from the 2000s and this is just, it's a guilty pleasure for a lot of action. If you're into aliens and monsters and uh, just this guy getting immense powers and blowing all sorts of stuff up, then Giver is going to be right up your alley. It is a classic, but not too many people really talk about the newer anime. I guess you could also consider the older ones as well. Uh, in terms of its story, it, it's kind of a failure because it's like the third reiteration of Giver that we have. We've got a movie from the 80s, a OVA from the 80s, and then the series from the 2000s, and they still do not complete the story yet in any of these versions. But if you're looking for a lot of fun, and science fiction, aliens and that sort of thing, then this is definitely your place to go. Next we have G Gundam, and I know a few of these uh, could also be considered as the sci-fi, but I would just consider these as mostly being action, because that is going to be the reason why a lot of people check these out. So G Gundam is a really over-the-top anime that if you're just looking for some fun, whether you like Gundam, whether you just like action or whatnot, then I think you're going to enjoy this. It's got a lot of action. It's also got a lot of comedy to it as well. Next, we have Shadow Skill. Now, this is a Shonen Battle series, but it's one of the anime that are basically a remnant from the time that Shonen Battle series could actually put hair on your chest because this is violent and there is a lot of blood here. Man, every time I think about these fights about how people go through so much damage, like just being thrown through walls and just uh, they have their arteries are cut and they're bleeding all over the place and they're trying to beat the enemy before they bleed out so they can get healed and it is just wild the story uh, every time I go back to rewatch it it's not quite what I remember it to be but the fights are totally worth watching it the story starts off a little bit silly and gets really serious uh, in the second half of it but it is definitely if you're looking for action you gotta check out shadow skill and lastly for the action category we have peacemaker which is a bit of a historical drama type of action anime and this is something that it it's basically historical but it follows two uh, fictional characters that are basically trying to join the Shinsengumi so that one of them can get strong enough in order to kill the person who murdered uh, his parents right in front of him. It's a story of revenge. It's a story of a young boy who's trying to become a demon and only in order to uh, avenge his parents. You know, it's it's definitely not your typical uh, shonen series like it may seem. You know, the character does look really cute, but there's actually some pretty good action here. Moving on to the final category is basically a hodgepodge of a few different shows that I couldn't really fit into any of the previous categories only because I picked the shows before I decided to separate them into categories, so don't blame me here, but the first one is Area 8. Now, this is an anime that's from the 80s, and it is a touching story about a guy who is an ace fighter pilot, but 
he basically gets uh, obligated to go into war as a mercenary because somebody basically drafts him and while he's the mercenary he's got to get a certain amount of kills and a certain amount of money ranked up so that he can buy his own freedom back so we're seeing his life and how basically everything that he left behind begrudgingly because you know he didn't really have much of a choice is either that or they're going to execute him and then we also see how his current lifestyle affects him and there's a lot of character development on his behalf and then we also see that there's a lot of drama here as well it's actually very exciting and if you're a big fan of top gun then you probably enjoy this too with its awesome uh, dog fights next we have rose of versailles and this is actually a pretty popular anime but the only reason i'm adding it here is because i noticed that a lot of people are overlooking this one simply because of its age, but this is definitely something that breaks the mold for 70s anime, and I can tell you this firsthand as somebody who watches 70s anime, Rose of Versailles is doing a lot of things that even current anime don't even try to attempt. First of all, it's got a strong warrior-like female protagonist who is the bodyguard to the uh, Queen of France right before the events of the French, Re the French Revolution, which is basically one of the bloodiest times in human history, so this is definitely a series that I wouldn't recommend a marathon because it is so dense and it's actually got a lot of drama here you never know who you can trust in the series and it's filled with these despicable people and on top of that you have the character uh, who is basically the bodyguard and she can't really have any say in what the the queen does so she's basically watching the queen just use up all of the tax money for herself without really realizing that it's starving the entire kingdom meanwhile she's just got to sit around and watch everybody starve to death it it really is is a tragic story and it's definitely one that's worth checking out. Next we have Onihei and this is actually from 2017 and I know I'm gonna get some people shaking their heads like why did you add a 2017 anime to the list? Because I feel like this is a hidden gem from as soon as it came out because it wasn't really appreciated and I feel like a lot of people basically turn their noses at it because uh, they basically judge the series because they're not a big fan of episodic anime and if you are a fan of episodic anime this, this is gonna be right up your alley. It's basically following a Samurai who is leading this arson division and uh, thievery division in his town and he's trying to basically stop crime But we come across a lot of criminals some of them are beyond redemption and some of them uh, We learn that they have very tragic uh, Backstories that lead them to the life of crime that they lead and they're actually good people So it's really something that you never know what to expect in each episode But it's always something that within the 30 minutes time frame of each episode You're always going to get connected to a new character that you didn't know about in the previous episode Episode. And lastly for the hodgepodge grouping and of course the list itself we've got an anime which is a bit of a hodgepodge itself first of all it's this monster hunting anime where you have two different uh, factions you've basically got the samurai and then you've got these monsters that are feasting on humans and then to add an extra layer of complexity to it you've got this Romeo and Juliet type thing where a man's in love with a girl who is a monster who eats humans so they're not only are they in love and dealing with each other's family like they're just trying to uh, to have their romance go through even though their families hate each other but they also have the fact that uh, one character is is in his blood to kill her type and is in her blood to eat him basically it's a show that it's touching it's exciting with the action the art style is actually very unique it's very strange it's definitely something that takes a bit of getting used to and it's got this really strange ending to it where it's like they, they love to mix it up and just turn the anime on its head where if it's a very dramatic moment sometimes they're gonna do something that is actually kind of funny you know it, it's very hard to describe I do have a review check it out in the description section below but if you're uh, definitely in the mood for uh, an original anime you know something that is n very unique and not like a whole lot of other anime out there then I would recommend checking out Kimono Zume. So what did you think of the list let me know about that in the comments section below just in case I missed a few that you'd like to add to the conversation here maybe I'll check them out at some point or another but if you enjoyed the list be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with my bi-weekly anime list my weekly anime reviews my weekly anime news and also also sorts of anime discussions I think you're really gonna enjoy it so be sure to subscribe and if you'd like to support the channel be sure to check out the patreon where you get all sorts of bonuses such as uh, weekly discord chats with me and then also early uh, videos plus you get to be put on this cool little card at the end of the video saying thanks to everybody who supports the channel because at this moment the channel is mostly being funded by viewer support so I just wanted to say thanks to everybody who currently supports the channel and I'll see you guys next time with my review of basilisk